Hello and welcome to the program. I'm your host, Neil Howard, here on Health Professional Radio. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment. In this segment, we're going to have a conversation with Dr. Greg Miller. He's joining us here as Chief Medical Officer at Vatuity. It's a national physician staffing organization, and he's going to share his insight on the current hospital and ER department landscape amid the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and newly introduced monkeypox. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Dr. Greg Miller. Thank you so much, Neil. Really glad to be here. Now, of course, I did mention your uh, your role there at Vituity. Give us a bit of your professional background. Tell us a bit about yourself, and then let's jump right into these latest ER trends. Yeah, sure. So I'm an emergency medicine physician. I, I practice just north of Seattle, uh, really close, actually, to where the first couple COVID outbreaks were uh, back in January of 2020, which seems so long ago, uh, especially in pandemic years, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, I'm the chief medical officer for Vituity, and we're a medical group that staffs a couple hundred emergency departments and hospitals and anesthesia groups. We've got about three to 4,000 uh, physicians and advanced providers, and we see about 7 million patients a year. Are you focused only on staffing ER in a hospital setting, or is it uh, acute care centers? Yeah, great question. We're in acute care centers throughout. So outpatient medicine, ambulatory urgent care, emergency okay. departments, hospital anesthesia. Give us a brief overview of your company, Vituity, and your role there at the company. Sure. So in my role, I'm focused on quality and medical education, uh, performance on, on patient experience and quality metrics. So we do a lot of work around responding to new and emerging diseases that we're seeing in emergency departments and outpatient medicine clinics, as well as on the inpatient side. And certainly that's been the case for COVID, and now it's beginning to be the case for monkeypox as well. Now, with this ongoing pandemic and these new viruses such as monkeypox, what have you and your fellow physicians seen as far as ER departments? What's trending now? What should we be on the lookout for? Yeah, um, it's I mean, it's definitely interesting to see the kind of epidemic of monkeypox within the pandemic of COVID. And what we're still seeing more than anything is COVID. Uh, Certainly, COVID is not nearly as bad as it was a year or two ago prior to the vaccines, but we're still seeing a lot of cases of COVID coming through the front door in the emergency department. And unfortunately, we're still admitting um, a certain number of patients, not nearly as many as we used to, but we're still admitting patients who are pretty sick with COVID and complications from COVID. What we're not seeing a ton of actually is monkeypox. I mean, there are a lot of cases out there. I think it, uh, as of today, a little bit more than 18,000 cases have been reported in the United States with potentially our first death from monkeypox today. But we're about 100 days into the monkeypox epidemic. Uh, and at this stage of the COVID epidemic or pandemic, uh, 100 days in uh, after our first case of COVID, we were seeing something like 20 to 25,000 cases a day, and we'd already had thousands of deaths. So Despite the fact that, you know, there certainly is a lot of very legitimate concern around this new monkeypox virus and its spread, uh, the, the, the scope and the scale of this is not nearly what it was with COVID. So you're not seeing the, the panic, the fear of just going to the, to the ER, even if it is an emergency that we were seeing in the early days of COVID? You're not seeing that? No, we're not. And that's a great question. During COVID, you know, our volumes dropped 40%. Um, Patients were staying home with heart attacks. Patients were staying home with strokes. Uh, And fortunately, now our ED volumes seem to be back. We're definitely seeing the same number of patients, if not more, coming through the front door right now. With the overworking of staff during the early days of the pandemic and even now, are you seeing a little bit of stress relief among staff who are, you know, it doesn't matter whether we have a pandemic or not, they still have to be there on the front line. I think the fear is gone. I think that panic, that that dread that we all had of showing up to work in 2020 and knowing that you might take home a virus and infect your family and potentially you might die, your loved one might die because of something you brought home from work, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that panic that we had certainly is not there anymore after the vaccines. And I don't think there's a similar concern around monkeypox. Like I think monkeypox is something that we feel comfortable managing. Uh, contact precautions, maybe a face mask, or the CDC definitely recommends a face mask. Um, you know, we feel like we can manage this. And if we do get monkeypox, there's not that same sense of dread. Mm. Um, you know, so far, there's only been potentially one death in the United States from monkeypox and somebody who's been reported to be severely immunocompromised. So if you're a healthy individual, 
the concerns about uh, taking monkeypox home and getting really sick yourself or, or transmitting it on to a loved one is certainly much lower. Has this attitude changed on its own or have companies such as Vituity and others been instrumental in relieving some of the or addressing some of the morale, some of the burnout issues that we saw early on? Yeah, it's a great question. A lot of healthcare organizations have really put a lot of effort and resources into improving morale and improving burnout. Um, and there, ha- there have been some positive strides, but that said, right now what people are facing on the front line is a real staffing crisis. A lot of individuals have retired maybe a few years early. A lot of individuals who are kind of on the fence about their job have since moved beyond acute care, you know, have moved out of the hospital and into more primary care, home-based care, school-based care. Uh, so there's been a real loss of, of uh, physicians, of advanced providers, and especially nurses and hospital staff as people have, have left emergency departments and inpatient units to find sort of more um, or less stressful areas to deliver care. Um, so that's what's really driving, I think, the burnout and low morale right now in healthcare is the fact that the people who are still showing up to work, and there are some really remarkable individuals, some amazing nurses, some amazing techs and frontline healthcare workers who are still showing up day after day, after night after night, weekend after weekend, showing up to their shifts. Uh, but the shifts are down 20%, 30% in terms of staffing when the patient volumes are right back to where they used to be. So it's been some tough times for the frontline staff. And if there's any frontline healthcare workers out there listening to this show, I just want to say thank you for your dedication and for okay. continuing to show up to work because what you do makes a difference. Are patients more knowledgeable, in your opinion, than they were prior to the pandemic? And that's a great point. I think um, in the past, prior to the pandemic, I think the ER was sort of just kind of the front door to the healthcare system for a lot of people. And after the pandemic, uh, individuals, some individuals are being much more thoughtful about where they select their care. Some of that's driven by the pandemic. Some of that's driven by increasing news about the cost of care and the, the burden, the financial burden of, of seeking healthcare in the United States. Uh, so patients are becoming more judicious about what they, um, what resource they choose to use. And I think that's great. I think the fact that, uh, that the population understands better when to access telehealth, uh, when to access an urgent care, when to access an emergency department, um, I think that's a positive move for everybody involved. I really appreciate just all the hard work and the dedication that our frontline staff has given. Uh, it's been amazing and really inspiring to see the, the nurses and the docs and the advanced providers who are there when I go in on shift. And I know that's happening over and over and over throughout all of our emergency departments and hospitals. And I want to say thank you to the frontline staff that are providing and continuing to provide great care to all of our patients. Greg, give us a website where we can learn more about Vituity. Yeah, www.vituity.com. And that's V-I-T-U-I-T-Y dot com, correct? You got it. Greg, I appreciate you joining us here on Health Professional Radio. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thank you for having me, Neil. It's great talking to you. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Greg Miller. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com health professional radio.